Hi, I'm Miss Ginsburg with No Adam, and today we're going to be reading Land and Water. This is a student reader in Unit 3. Mapping the Surface. Mapping Alaska. Alaska is a state in the United States. It is more land than any other state. Alaska is remote. This means that it is far away from the rest of the United States. Not many roads connect Alaska to the rest of the country. Some places in Alaska can only be reached by helicopter. So here's a map of North America and here's Alaska. It is hard to make accurate maps of Alaska because it is so remote. A map is a drawing or other model of an area of Earth's surface. Maps are important because they give different kinds of information about a location. There are different kinds of maps. One kind of map shows the landforms of a specific area. A landform is a natural feature on Earth's surface. Mountains are landforms. Dunes are landforms. Hills and valleys are also landforms. Landforms on Earth. Mountain. High, rocky land. Taller than a hill. Usually has steep sides and a pointed or rounded top. Hill. A raised part of Earth's surface. Has sloping sides. Valley. Low land between hills or mountains. Dune, a pile of sand eroded by wind or water. In addition to landforms, there are also different bodies of waters on Earth's surface. A body of water is a part of Earth's surface that is filled with water. The ocean is the largest body of water on Earth. It is made up of salt water. Lakes, rivers, ponds, and waterfalls are other bodies of water on Earth. They are filled with fresh water. So here's an image of Earth from space. The blue parts of Earth are the oceans. The ocean is the largest body of water on Earth. Bodies of water on Earth. An ocean covers most of Earth's surface, largest body of salt water on Earth. River, a large stream of fresh water flows over the land into a lake, ocean, or other body of water. Lake, a large body of water, fresh water surrounded by land. Waterfall, a place where running water flows over a cliff or other steep drop. Paul Morin is a scientist. He worked with other scientists to make new maps of Alaska. These new maps are very detailed. They show individual trees. They also show lakes, roads, and buildings. These maps are also three-dimensional. This means that the maps aren't flat. They take up air space. They are called three-dimensional because they have three parts. They have length, width, and height. Solid objects are all three-dimensional. So this box is three-dimensional because it has length, width, and height. Two D and three D maps. Most maps are two-dimensional, two D. This means they are flat. They have two parts, length and height. They don't have width. This means they have no thickness. Drawings on paper are two-dimensional. This map is two-dimensional. The images on it are flat. Patterns in water, land. Maps are important for showing us where different things are located. One common kind of map shows the different kinds and shapes of land and water in an area. 
This is useful because different areas have different kinds of shapes of land and water. Some areas have tall mountains. Other areas are very flat. Some areas have many lakes or rivers. Other areas have little to no water. This area has many rivers and lakes. There are different ways to show all of the landforms of an area. Maps use symbols to show different parts. A symbol can be a shape, a line, or a color. For example, blue is often used to show bodies of water. Green is sometimes used to show where there are plants. All maps have a key to help us understand the symbols. They also have a title to tell us what the map is showing. Water on Earth, Earth from space. There are cameras far above Earth. These cameras are in space. Some of them take pictures of Earth. Scientists can use these pictures to make maps of Earth. Some of these maps show that parts of Earth are covered in ice or snow. Other parts of Earth are made up of oceans or land. Solid water. Ice and snow are both made of water. They are solid forms. Remember that one property of matter is whether it is a solid, a liquid, or a gas. Solids have their own shape. They keep this shape until something changes them by force. The picture on the left shows ice. The picture on the right shows a girl holding snow. Both ice and snow are forms of solid water. Liquid water. Oceans, rivers, and lakes are liquid water. Rain is also liquid water. Liquids have no shape of their own. They take the shape of their container. They also flow. The ocean is liquid water. Liquid water flows. Rivers are also liquid water. When it rains, liquid water falls from the sky to the ground. It is pulled down by gravity. Gravity is a force that pulls things toward each other. Earth's gravity pulls all things down towards Earth's center. Think about throwing a ball in the air. It always falls back to the ground because of gravity. When rain falls to the ground, some of the water soaks into the ground. The rest of it begins to flow downhill over the land. This means it moves from high places to low places. Gravity pulls liquid water downhill. This is how rivers and streams form. The land is often uneven. Some parts of the land form bowl-like areas called basins. When water flows into a basin in the land, it collects there. This is how lakes and ponds form. Water flows downhill over the land. It collects in lakes like this one. The water cycle. Water on Earth doesn't always stay in the same form. Like all matter, water can change from a solid to a liquid or from a liquid to a gas. It depends on the amount of heat present. With enough heat, some of the water in the oceans, rivers, and lakes will turn into gas. This gas will move into the atmosphere. We can't see it, but it's still there. This is called evaporation. All of Earth is heated by the sun. Evaporation is what happens when you leave a glass of water outside on a hot summer day. Over time, there will be less water in the glass. The water didn't disappear, Heat turns some of that water into a gas in the air. Over time, water in the atmosphere gets cooler. It will turn back into a liquid. This is called condensation. The drops of water attach to pieces of dirt or dust in the sky. Over time, many of these pieces join together. This forms a cloud.
When the cloud gets too heavy, the liquid water falls back onto the surface. It can be either rain or snow. This is called precipitation. After it rains, some of the water soaks into the ground and is stored there. Some of the water is stored in lakes, rivers, and oceans. In cold parts of Earth, some of the water is stored as solid ice and snow. This is called collection. Water collects in rivers, lakes, and ocean. It also collects as snow and ice. Not all parts of Earth store water as ice or snow. This is because some parts of Earth are heated more than others. The most northern part of Earth and the most southern parts of Earth are cold throughout the year. This is because the sun doesn't heat them as much as other parts of Earth. A lot of water is stored as ice and snow here. The tops of mountains also often store water as ice and snow. This is because the tops of mountains are colder than the lower parts of the mountain. This has to do with the temperature of air close to the ground compared to high up. Air close to the ground holds more heat than air high up in the air. The tops of mountains are colder than the bottoms of mountains. This is why snow and ice are often found on mountaintops. When temperatures warm up, some of that ice melts. When ice melts, it turns into liquid water. Some of the water will soak into the ground. Gravity pulls some of the liquid water downhill. Some of it will collect in lakes or oceans. Some of it will evaporate. Water is always moving around the planet. It changes between a solid and a liquid and between a liquid and a gas. It also moves over the land. This movement is part of the water cycle. Wow, I learned a lot reading land and water and I had fun too. I hope that you learned a lot and that you had fun also. I'll see you tomorrow with another book. Bye.